We are back. So we talk a lot about the rise of AI on this show, but for Canada, are we ready for what's coming? Big question. In a recent survey, 65% of Canadians expressed that they feel they felt there was insufficient regulation of AI in this country. So here to dig into this with us is futurist Sinead Bovell. Welcome back to the show. Good to see you. I know that you're always super busy and all over the place, so we're grateful to have you here on our sofa again. All right, so let's dig into it. As we just mentioned in that intro, there's a lot of discussion about AI and regulation. So where do things stand with Canada as far as regulation and AI? So Canada actually doesn't have any federal regulation Nothing. of artificial intelligence right now. So in 2022, the federal government did introduce the AI and Data Act as part of Bill C-27. There's been some amendments made to it, but it hasn't yet passed. And now with all of the reshuffling in Parliament and election at some point this year, it's possible this process has to start again. We're not entirely unprotected. There's the Canadian Human Rights Act, which prohibits discrimination, and that would include decisions influenced by algorithms. There's some privacy laws which would protect some aspects of our data collection, but there's no overarching AI laws in Canada yet. Ooh. Okay, how do we stack up? Like, listen, you know, Parliament's prorogued, like you just said. There's no, we don't even have a, a new leader yet. All mm -hmm. the things have to happen. But where do we stack up to our peer countries? Where are they at? Where are we at? Actually, the only two regions in the world with newly introduced comprehensive AI policy are China and the European Union, with the EU being seen as the strictest regulator to date and it's actually causing them a lot of challenges. Mm. The UK hasn't rolled out comprehensive AI regulation and they don't plan on doing that. The US has no federal AI policy and I don't imagine anything strict coming out of there, although some states have gone on to regulate AI themselves. Mm -hmm. But Canada isn't actually too far behind when you think about it on a global level. Mm -hmm. All yeah. right, well, all the AI discussions are talking about regulation. What are we missing here? Is there something else we should be focused on? Yeah, and it's an important point because regulation is certainly a big part of a country's preparedness. It's mm -hmm. not a barrier to innovation like a lot of people say. Mm -hmm. It's essential to it. But it's not the whole story. You don't just keep a technology safe by regulating it. You have to also teach people how to use it and you have to tell the stories of why this technology matters in the first place. Mm -hmm. What concerned me about a study, a recent study, was that 47% of Canadians felt there was no need to use generative AI at work. Another 26% didn't even consider the technology at all. AI is one of the most important technologies of our time, and we don't want to import it. We want to build it, uh. and we want to steer it so Canada can retain its seat on the at the global table. Mm -hmm. right. And we have to remember, AI is a Canadian story. One of the biggest breakthroughs in AI that led to the generative AIs and the chat GPTs happened at the University of Toronto, the deep learning breakthrough. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then two of the infamous godfathers of artificial intelligence, they're Canadian. But it's impossible to be a leader in the AI story if we don't claim our role in it. Mm. Interesting. Okay, so there's a lot of concerns, I think maybe because of lack of knowledge, but a lot of Canadians have worries about AI and maybe it's the headlines. It's like the deep fake videos, for example, mm -hmm. um, and fake images out there. So we don't have current regulation, as you just said, and you say though, there is still a way out of this. How so? Yeah, so I think we're right to be concerned about the threat of deep fakes and we see the harms in real time but I do believe we'll make it out of this deep fake nightmare. There mm -hmm. are solutions, but they're longer term, such as changing the digital infrastructure we share information on to one that's a bit more traceable. So you can still be anonymous, your identity is protected, but we can see how that information is flowing throughout a network. Short term, it's more challenging. We have to teach people to get really, really good at identifying trustworthy news sources, and mm -hmm. journalists have a, lot of, a big role to play here. Yeah. And we're going to have to just not wait this out, but there's certain at certain laws we can deploy right away, like banning non-consensual deep fake intimate images. No benefit to that use case. Let's outlaw it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Oof. good advice. Yeah. Very good advice. Especially Seems easy. Us. Yeah, because it affects women especially. All right, so the deep fakes is one thing. Another thing that people are really concerned about is how AI is going to affect the workforce. So talk to us about that. So we, we do need to build an AI-ready workforce in Canada, and that means investing more money mm -hmm. in education, in skilling, and training. But over the medium to long term, there is going to be disruption to the workforce. 60% of the occupations we work in today didn't exist 80 years ago. 
The challenge is when jobs disappear faster than new ones are created. Mm -hmm. But we can plan for this. The most responsible government has a plan for the best case scenarios and the more challenging ones. So how do we protect Canadians' quality of life and economic security through disruption? And even in the best case scenarios where AI leads to more abundance than we can imagine, like all the tech leaders talk about, mm -hmm. how do we ensure that abundance is evenly distributed? Mm. What are the new economic models of the future? And that's why the person leading Canada, whoever that is, into the AI age may be one of the most critical leaders in our history. Mm. AI is going to change global order. It's going to lead to disruption, small and astronomical, but it has the potential to bring abundance at a scale we've never seen before. Mm. Leadership needs a plan for all of it. Yes. Okay. I love how you make it so hopeful. Yeah. <laughs> yes. we're terrified. So true. Um, okay, so, you know, listen, we talk a lot about how it can threaten us and jobs, for example, but as you've just said, it does also present a lot of opportunity. So last year, the Parti Québécois unveiled a proposal to get Canada to adopt more robots for our workforce. So are we going to see others leaning into AI this way? And, and how specifically could we see AI fuel growth in Canada. Do we even have an answer to that yet, mm -hmm. though? We do. So from manufacturing to construction to retail, provinces across the country are facing some severe labor shortages. And it's not just because we aren't training enough people for these roles. That's some of it. But there's a bigger challenge of not enough people to work in these jobs. So robots are going to ease some of those labor shortages. But then there's also a lot of jobs that are very dangerous for humans, like search and rescue, wildfires, jobs with chemical exposure. So we'll soon have the options to deploy robots to those front lines instead. But then there's also robots that are having these big scientific breakthroughs because scientists are programming them to work around the clock. So they're doing these experiments that would have taken a human hand years or decades. So there's a lot of ways robots are going to start to appear in our workforce. Mm. Okay, well, you make it sound very positive, and we love that, because <laughs> I'm a little skeptical, so I love that you're here and giving us all of these answers. And you're saying that AI doesn't have to have a negative story. It can be a positive one. How so? I think... In Canada in particular, mm -hmm. we have to remind ourselves that AI is our story. It's a Canadian story. And a thriving AI future, that requires leading researchers, accessible education, strong values, and infrastructure, which means clean energy, it means a lot of land, and it means cold weather for data centers to keep them cool. Canada we got has that. all of these things. <laughs> what we're missing is a shared vision of our future with AI. What is the Canadian future with AI? We have yet to hear that. And each of us has a role to play in this conversation. It shouldn't just be up to a few people. What do we want our vision of this technology to look like in this country? And we all have a role to play in shaping that. Oh, we love it when you're here, Sinead. So Thank good. you so much. <laughs> yeah. Truly. Truly. All right. We'll have you back very, very soon, I'm sure. I'm sure. Why don't we take a quick break, everybody? Digest that. We'll be back right after this. Hey, you. Come a bit closer. We've got so many more must-see interviews, spicy debates, lifestyle tips, and pop culture moments. So subscribe to our channel by tapping the logo below, and don't miss out.